Okay, I have a very interesting personality test to share with you today. And what we will be testing in particular is whether you are more of a pushy person, kind of aggressive, or a push over, one who gives in too readily to avoid argument or contention. Now, it's probably true that it's best to be a perfect mixture of those. Either extreme is not all that great. Okay, so you can see we have these clubs. The clubs are going to represent the degree to which a person is pushy, kind of aggressive. The hearts will represent the degree to which the person is a pushover, maybe a little too kind-hearted, okay? So let's go ahead, and now with input from you throughout all of this, because that's important, I want this test to truly reflect your personality. That's the key, okay? So I'll flip these down. Now, how would you like these stacked? Right on left? Okay, very good. Now we're going to be mixing the cards thoroughly with tremendous input from you. Now to begin to uh, randomize the cards, why don't we go ahead and just deal them out into three piles um, with you know stacking done in such a way that I'll just show you here. Uh, the cards are well mixed. Note to you as the performer, this is a Bessie sequence of order eight. As such, it is invariant or unharmed by virtually every systematic mixing procedure used by mankind, okay? And so that's really the engine driving all of this. So I will have a link in the description below to Bessie's sequences, what they are, how to construct them, and how I discovered them. But to the typical spectator, these cards are gonna look well mixed. And if they don't, we're going to be mixing them further with input completely decided by them. Okay, so this is where we are. So what I thought we would do, uh, we've dealt out into three piles. Why don't we deal out into four piles? Random stacking decided by you, right on left. Okay, very good. Uh, why don't we deal out into four piles? We've done three, two, why don't we do four? How would you like these stacked? Left to right, right to left. We can even do a leap frog stacking, if you want to see that. Just left to right, no leap frog. Okay, would you like to do another one of those? One more. Okay, that's fine. Your choice. That's the key. Okay, left to right, right to left, or leapfrog? Right to left, leapfrog. Okay, so this one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. This one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. How would you like these stacked? Right on left? Okay, that's fine. It's a free choice. We can even Klondike shuffle the cards into two piles, kind of a fun thing to do. I don't know if I've done that much on my channel. How would you like these stacked? Right on left. Uh, we can even Klondike into four piles. Okay, how would you like these stacked? Left to right, right to left, or even leapfrog? Left to right, leapfrog. Okay, this one leaps over its neighbor. This one leaps over its neighbor. How would you like these stacked? Right on left, okay, very good. We can do something called an up jog. If you'd like to see it, we don't have to. You would, okay. Um, if we do this, it just gives you more choices here. Um, number one, you, you chose to have me do it. That's one choice. And then when I strip these out, you can decide how to stack. Right on left. Okay. And we can even do the crazy Australian down under, if you would like. Just one of those. Okay, so let me show you how that works. So it's down under, down, under, down, under, down, under, down, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Very good. Would you like to do any more of the mixing that we've done here? You'd like to do a Klondike in which we just stack the cards into one pile? Okay, that's fine. Let me pick up the cards here. Okay, so this, would you, we just take the top and bottom off as one for the Klondike. Okay, very good. Okay, any final ones? Into four piles, but deal down instead of across. Okay, I think I know what you mean. Do you mean like, go like this? Yeah, okay, that's great. How would you like these stacked? Right to left, leapfrog? No, just ordinary stacking. Okay, wow. So let's just do one more 
element in this task that gives you tremendous choices. Boy, it does indeed. So watch what we're going to do. We're going to deal out four cards, half of them. Okay, now what I need you to do is we're going to interlace these cards, whatever order or quantity you would like. Okay, so which one would you like me to pick up first? The right? Okay, that's fine. Now what? A left? Okay. Okay, now what? Left again? That's fine. A right? Okay. Left? Okay. Right? Right again? Okay, and I think that leaves one on the left. Okay, so I think you would have to agree that nobody could have guessed the particular sequence of choices that you just made. There's no way that anyone could see that ahead of time. If so, they're going on to fame and fortune because they are a true wizard. Okay, so just realize that those choices were very much decided by you. And so that means the current order of the cards is very much decided by you. That's the important thing. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to use our little Klondike shuffle one last time in a different way still. It's crazy how many different ways we're using it, right? And each way that we use it, it leads to something different. That's the amazing thing, is I'm going to Klondike a pair to the table on the left, another pair to the table on the left, and then leave the others as a second pile. Which of these would you like? You want the right one? Okay, so that's your pile. This is mine. Okay. Now off to the side, I've had this written prediction in camera view the whole time. So let's just take a look at what I predicted would be the outcome of all of your choices. Okay, let's see what we did here. Both, both of you will be a perfect blend of pushy and pushover. Okay, I mentioned that would probably be the best for an individual to not be overly pushy or overly a pushover. Uh, wow, what do you think the chances are? that happening after all of these choices that you made that I had no control over, nor could I possibly know what you were going to choose ahead of time. Okay. So in other words, I think what this is trying to tell us is if we are a perfect blend of pushy and pushover, you know, each, each of us individually, there should be exactly two clubs and two hearts in each of our two piles. Okay, kind of afraid to look here. Uh, maybe I'll look at mine first. <laughs> okay, so I want two clubs and two hearts. Did I get them? I did indeed. Yes. Okay, so I have this perfect blend of those opposites. What about you? Did you get them as well? You did indeed. You got two clubs and two hearts, and even notice that they're, of course, different orders, which you would expect them to be because you've made all these random choices. But nonetheless, your choices have led to a verification of a prediction that was written before we even began this personality test. Whoa, okay. So how does this work? I've already pointed out that it uses Bessie's sequences of order eight. So that is the secret to the fact that we can mix the, once it's in that organization, in fact, it's, let's just put it in that organization here so you can be reminded. It's one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. That's the sequence I have dozens of videos talking about Bessie sequences, and I'll add a link in the description below that will take you to a series that talks about and teaches you about Bessie sequences and how to use them. So if you think of red as one and black as zero, this is one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. This is a very special packet arrangement that was discovered within recent years. This crazy thing cannot be destroyed by virtually every systematic mixing procedure we use today in card magic or in card games. Okay, that's the key. So we put it through all of this mixing it won't harm this. It may invert it, which 
simply means the reds and blacks switch places as a whole, but that won't undermine its, quote, structure. And then once we know it looks like this, what's new here that I've never shown before is when I did the one, two, three, four. Okay. So in fact, we can even show it to you face up if you would like and kind of show you the result here. I have never riffled, shuffled Bessie sequences or quasi Bessie sequences until fairly recently. Okay. And then I discovered there's remarkable things that happen when you do that. Okay, so we're taking advantage of that. Okay, so when I had you choose left, right, 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 left, left, whatever you wanted, it has the effect of interlacing the cards in the kind of way that a riffle shuffle interlaces cards. Okay, so sometimes the cards get interlaced perfectly. That's called a perfect shuffle. Most of the time they don't, right? When people riffle shuffle, you get big clumps of cards on the left or right. Okay, so I had you freely choose and you are free to choose this. Maybe you want the right one first. Maybe you want the right one second. That's fine. And then left and then maybe right, uh, left, left, maybe right and then left. Okay, no matter what sequence of choices you make there, there's something that will be guaranteed about the structure of the packet. Let me just point it out to you here. What we know for sure will happen is the top two cards will have to consist of one of each color, a red and a black, or here a club and a heart, and the bottom two will also have to consist of quote, a red and a black, a zero and a one. Those are all kind of equivalent ways of talking about the whatever dichotomous characteristic you've set up. And then the middle four will always have, let's say, two red and two black, or two hearts and two clubs, okay? So if that's the case, which it is, you can test it out. Think about what I did after I had you go left, right, right, left, 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 right, or whatever you chose. What did I do? I Klondiked two pairs into one pile and left the remaining cards as the second pile. But just look at the structure here. If I Klondike a pair, it takes the top one and the bottom off together, puts them over here. If I Klondike another pair, it takes the next, the new top card and the new bottom card off as a pair. Well, I've just set these four cards right here into the left pile and I've left these in the middle for the right pile. And as I've just pointed out, that is guaranteed to separate the cards into an equal number of clubs and hearts, or reds and blacks, or zeros and ones, depending on how you're labeling the cards in your Bessie sequence structure. Okay, so anyway, that's the kind of the key to it. And there's an analogous thing that happens for quasi Bessie sequences and Bessie sequences of higher orders than just eight. Okay, well, anyway, thank you for watching. I uh, hope this video isn't too long. And take a look at um, other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.